Hey guys, Space Marine 658 here. Uh, today we're going to be making a quest system. Um, this first episode is just going to be covering plugins, setups, anything like that that we currently know that we need. Uh, but as we go on, anything additional we need, we'll cover that in that specific video. Now, this is going to be a pretty comprehensive series of videos. So there's going to be a list here um, covering some of the things we'll see. For example, gameplay tags, uh, creating quest structs, um, storing those quests, tracking them. Um, a lot of what we're going to be doing is doing it in the best possible way we can. Um, so that's best practices. So some of this may be a little bit complex, um, but I'm going to try and step through it as beginner friendly way I can while still keeping it fast for those of you who've been doing these kind of things for a little while. Uh, but we're going to be talking about event driven um, design. Um, so basically my big focus with this is to make things as optimized as possible. I really subscribe to the method of event driven as much as you can. So for example, our UI that we're going to show with our quests, we're going to try to have event driven. Um, everything that we can is going to be driven by triggering these events. I'm going to show you how to bind and unbind um, different quests. So that way, um, when you are designing these, you'll be able to do it yourself. Uh, but a lot of it is going to be designed around the idea of to make these as optimized as possible, we only want to trigger updates when something happens. Um, so we're going to get pretty deep in the weeds about, you know, how to actually set that up. And I'm going to show you all a few different ways to do it. Um, so I've basically set up my engine here, as you can see, with the first person template. Um, I haven't really done much other than install the plugin electronic nodes. It's one I really like to show off the, the blueprint UI in a little bit cleaner way. Uh, but otherwise, um, that's pretty much it. Now, as far as the actual setup goes, you're going to want to basically, if you're following along or if you have your own project, um, you're going to want to make sure you have some kind of input mapping control um, with some mapping context here so that way you can do some basic moving around because um, what we're going to do is we're going to just use the basics here to trigger some of our quest and um, sort of set up a lot of um, what's going to happen in the game um, so for our system um, there is a lot of different elements that that are going to be to it because we're using an event driven architecture um, we can basically trigger a quest completion off of almost anything. Uh, but with that comes a little bit more nuance and control over, you know, how you actually trigger those events. Now, uh, when we're actually talking about, you know, these events, you know, what does that mean? Uh, well, there's a lot of different, uh, as you can see here, there's a lot of different ways you can trigger events. Uh, you can trigger events, for example, here, this is a rifle pickup where you can walk up to it and pick that up. Um, that is something you could use to trigger an event. Um, but we're going to kind of walk through that and show you guys piece by piece. Uh, but yeah, so if you have any questions, definitely leave them down below. But um, as far as the actual project settings go, um, the only really big thing that we need to worry about for now is we're going to want to go into our gameplay tags container. And you're going to see um, under here that there is actually a whole bunch of different things related to gameplay tags. Uh, but the only real thing that we're worried about here is this tag list. What we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to create um, a new basic starting point for our quest system. So we're going to call it quest. And this is just going to be a generic top level tag. Um, but we're going to hit period so that we can create a layer down. And we're just going to call this something like um, this is quest.status, and we'll give it its first tag of completed. Um, oh, and, yeah, and then the source file, you just can do the default gameplay tags.ini. Now, if you have um, other tags you've already created for, say, another project or something, you can always import those or set those as a source. Um, you just have to bring them into the project. Uh, but we're going to start with this, and then we're going to give it one more tag of... Um, okay, if you do this, it'll actually grab what you're currently at, so that way you don't have to type that all back in. Um, so quest.status.completed, and then we'll do active is also a tag we'll want. And then I'd say we're probably going to want what? Active tag uh, completed and failed. Then we can have a failed status. Um, doo -doo -doo. that's the big important ones for now. Um, and so with that, 
that is a majority of our setup. Everything else, you know, we can walk through as we get there um, with the enhanced input and everything like that. Uh, but yeah, so that is the majority of the setup. Now, as far as plugins go, uh, we're probably going to dive a little bit into common UI once we get to the UI portion of the quest. Uh, but we're going to probably have a whole episode on setting that up specifically for our quest system. So I'm not too worried about having that here. Um, everything else is going to be sort of broken out into chunks that make sense in their episode. Uh, but if you have any questions or anything you'd like to see included in this quest um, series, definitely leave it down in the uh, comments down below. That's the easiest way to make sure that I cover it. But uh, as you saw there, I'm going to cover quite a bit of different topics. Uh, but yeah, that should be it for today. Um, the next video is going to be uh, quite a bit longer. Uh, but if you have any questions, leave them down below. But otherwise, good luck and good hunting.